I shouldn't get comfortable anywhere, but I'm going to move you because I'm going to put out the table there. I'm sorry. I was not really up front about it. This is our agenda for tonight. You probably got that in email. That's what um, John created about this first case, which is the interior. Um, yeah. Um, I didn't hear that she wasn't, so. Here. 
and it has a gable roof that runs like this, and so we're proposing to just carry that gable roof all the way through so that it'd be one consistent shape and look, and we're looking at it from the driveway side, um, and uh, from the street side, you <coughs> should not know that it's there, because the, the gable will match up uh, right on down the line. So. Um, we have, uh, the purpose of this plan was originally uh, to propose a revised septic design um, until we realized that we needed to come for a, uh, a use permit for the ADU. And so this shows uh, the expansion onto the proposed septic. Um, currently, it's a pipe and stone system. It's a it's known shape and origin. It's brand new. Um, and currently, um, we would like to get what we call a pocket design. Um, so we design it. Uh, we know that it's permittable. Um, and then not necessarily install it until such time as it's really uh, required by the applicants to have it installed. Uh, John points out in his uh, memo that that may or may not be appropriate. Um, and I guess what I would ask the board is uh, to just leave it up to the state as to whether or not um, they felt that a pocket design is, is, is um, acceptable. Our experience with this is um, the way DES is interpreting the ADU, ADU law that is relatively new um, they are trying not to put large onuses on people uh, for creating these types of uh, in-law apartments, if you will. Um, and so they do allow, in this instance, pocket designs. What they don't allow is other expansions of use, um, such as additional bedrooms to be installed without having a system designed and installed at that time also. Um, I think, John, there were a couple of other clerical things. Uh, Before you move on, Ms. Burley, you kind sure. of have to uh, explain the phrase pocket design. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, not, I'm not that familiar yep. with it. I apologize. Nope, nope. Uh, I use jargon sometimes, and I should be. So a pocket design is you get a, you submit a plan. So we would submit this plan to DES, and they would say, yep, this plan looks good. It's approved for this use, but the installation is not actually instituted. And so um, there were often cases where people would take a two-bedroom house and then convert it to a four-bedroom or larger house, and we would get what was called a pocket design. So we would design a septic system that would be approved for that number of bedrooms, and the applicants would never install it. The issue with that was, um, you know, you have 10, 15 years that go by, two or three people have bought and sold the home at that point, and then all of a sudden the system fails, and they realize, well, this was never really designed for this intent otherwise. The reason uh, DES views ADU units a little differently is typically you don't have a large household in the primary structure, um, and you have a very low water usage in the uh, secondary ADU use. So um, you have a much lower uh, potential and possibility for uh, future failures in the system. So in this case, that's why they allow for us to get an approved septic system, uh, but not necessarily install it. The purpose for the approved system is to prove that you can fit everything you need to fit on the site um, and meet sewage loading on the site so that it is approvable. Because you will have instances in town, every town has them, where lots are too small, even for the additional ADU units. Um, so that's why we require to get the, uh, the septic design approved. You're saying basically, Approve the design, but but give us permission not to install it. That's right. And, and would you ever be compelled to install it if, if you had a failure? If only if you had a failure. Okay. Sure. Right. Please go on. I apologize for yeah. the yeah. interruption. Uh, so, John, I don't have your your uh, narrative right in front of me, but uh, I my recollection was that the rest of this was uh, clerical. Uh, I think our fingers got ahead of us on the town's name and the title block. Yeah. Uh, John pointed out that he'd really like to see a turnaround. And um, we did uh, clarify with John today that the town has not expanded the ADU square footage. It is still 500 square feet. So the um, circulated drawing uh, would just need to be uh, revised in size a little bit prior to a building permit uh, to make sure that it's 500 square feet of living space. Anything further, Mr. Berry, before we... Um, not unless you wanted me to move point by point through the condition of use criteria. They are pretty basic. Um, hopefully the board had an opportunity to, to read through them. I can if, um, if you wish. Uh, John Krebs, what do you recommend on that? Well, it, it's, it's all laid out, I think, in 8.1.3. They're pretty straightforward. I think Chris is right. I, I will tell you he complies with, with all of them. 
the only thing that I wanted to see was the architectural design, which I haven't seen, but I think it went around here. Um, <clears throat> I do have sort of mixed feelings. I, I know the state allows these hip pocket approvals <clears throat> for these ADUs. I don't like the practice. I think, the, in fact, the exact opposite, that if you go from a three-bedroom to a four-bedroom house and you, you, you get a hip pocket approval, the, the load in your septic system is probably going to be minimal. But I know the applicant is saying his mother-in-law is moving in, but what happens if it's a husband, you know, a couple? They get sold. And they have a, they have a little kitchen at, they, they're using more water. I, it's, I don't, I think it's beyond this board's purview, unfortunately. I think it, if the state says he doesn't have to put in, he doesn't have to put in, I'd like, it, it, you know, it's a brand new system. I would, I would, uh, it, it, you know, add on to it now. But I, I think it's probably beyond our, our purview. Kevin? I don't know. <coughs> Basically, because it does say if there is a failure in the, in, the, in the future, there is a viable plan that can be installed, approved, fits, you, you know, that can be implemented fairly quickly to, to remedy the situation should you have a failure of the original. So, I mean, that's kind of how I read the, you know, saying, saying that it, it's, it's actually approved. You have another plan backup turnkey. No, I, don't, I understand. I understand the law. I mean, that's, that, that's, that, that, that's kind of the peace of mind of it, yep, right? Yep, yep. But I guess you know funding could become an issue if this happens and, and the two buyers downstream, yeah, it's approved, but we can't put them in. You know, I, I, I do see that validity of that side. Any other members of any comments? I I I'm concerned. I have to say because although you know, I think the state law was trying to ameliorate the housing crisis and make these things easier, um, more approvable. Um, I don't like the pocket design just because properties sell over time, and while it's one person in that space now, um, it's almost guaranteed not to be at some point. It'll be rented out as an apartment with how many people in it someday. So I guess, you know, that's the caveat emptor on the next owner. But You don't want to put it in, do you? Excuse me? No. Okay. No, but, I mean, and I cannot, you know, I wouldn't expect that anybody would want to undertake yeah. that additional yeah. expense if they weren't. Forced to. The tank doesn't change. But I think partly, too, in all of the changes as of recent with the ability to add ADUs to houses, I think they're, they're trying to make it a little bit easier. I mean, yeah. Someone has to, who just built the house, now has to install a larger septic system capacity when he has a perfectly fine one now. But, I mean, I understand guidelines being what they, what they may be. Two buyers down the street may not, down the road from now, may not have the funds to do it, but... Um, and may not realize what they're getting. I think it's like not necessarily obvious to a future buyer. Or but I, to some degree, I feel it's like penalizing the current. <coughs> well, the current right, that's the not point where free. he has a functioning system, and and if it does fail in, in his ownership of the house, he knows he has to address it. He's the one that, that put installed it. So I don't. In, in my mind, the pocket. I know we keep beating it to death, but um, I don't have concerns about that. I guess that would hold me back. I think it's more about the intent of the law, which is to try to make these things easier for people to build. Yeah. It just still seems kind of flawed to me. Mr. Barrett, someone was uh, researching a chain of title in terms of buying this property in the future. Uh, would there be notice, and I, I'm an attorney, but I don't do title work, would there be notice in the record that there was a pocket design here and not a you know, fully implemented design or not? You know. Not as a matter of practice, but I mean, we could, almost like we do, um, we, you know, the intent to, to, intent to give an easement, but you don't give an easement right away. It's, the, the reality is, John, uh, that, you know, when, when, when and if this system fails, they're going to they're gonna have to build a new windshield. So, um, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, that doesn't need it, either, that doesn't need to be anything in the title uh, to protect the future buyers because they're going to have to replace a system that, that accommodates whatever the uses are. So I think it's, I think we're, we are we may be beating this to, to death, but um, because I think the state the state even if we said we wanted that we wanted them to install the state's going to say they don't have to. So um, well, really quick, so I'm I'm the builder, I'm the guy again, call again. But if you're adding a system here, if you're adding it to the system. Realistically, if the system is going to fail, you're not saving the system by 15, 20 years. You're saving it by a year, maybe, or something like that. It's minimal. Okay. I added it now, so. All right, thank you, Mr. Good. Especially, yeah.
especially with this type of system. I mean, this is this is a pipe and stone system. These are more the older style, tried and true type systems. You know, might be more of a concern on the newer type system. But, I think the board members have any questions at this point. Uh, before we open for public comment, um, I should have asked the secretary at the beginning to uh, indicate whether or not all the butters have been notified. Yes, all the butters were duly notified. And uh, notice was posted in clusters and around town. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any members of the public that would like to uh, comment on the special uh, test tonight? I don't hear any, so, um, okay. Let's, all right, I'm going to close the public hearing, yes. All right. And, John, what should we do next at this point? Being well, what, what I'd like to see is a, um, would you mind just modifying that? What I'd like to see is the drawing modified just to show the turnaround, show the driveway going to the garage door. Yeah. And then maybe correct the spelling error. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then I think those would be the two conditions. I found another spelling error for you. Uh oh. Oh no. That's not a good box of X. So no. Someone's gonna get robbed tomorrow. Um so I guess the condi the conditions I see are uh, correct the spelling errors, change the um, driveway or add the driveway turnaround and make sure the driveway connects to the garage. And, and John, I, I assume that with the uh, the architectural drawing that was sent around today, that your concern number four was addressed by that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I think it might be appropriate this time um, to for a motion to determine that the application is completely over. Second. All in favor of that the motion or the application is complete, say aye. Aye. All opposed. So it uh, is deemed to be a complete application. Um, would that be appropriate to have a vote at this point? Uh, anyone like to make a motion to uh, approve or disapprove the uh, application? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, the conditions are correct the spelling errors. Uh, and revise the driveway uh, to, sh to have a turnaround and to connect to the garage. Two conditions. Okay, so there's a motion <coughs> for approval with the two conditions uh, specified by Mr. Krebs. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mr. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Berry. Thank Yeah, let's let's not. I'll, I'll wait for the revise. Yeah. Actually, you know what? So I can compare it. Yeah, I'll. You better circle the other spelling here that you noticed. Yeah, I did. That apparently I missed. Got it. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, if I'm reading correctly, is a preliminary review of a proposed subdivision of the Bennett property located at 658. Silver Street Tax Map 20, Lot 19. Those folks like to approach and begin their presentation, that'd be great. Thank you. My name is Bob Stolen with Traffic Engineering. This is uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Mike, Mike, Mike <laughs> Brigham. Hold oh, 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 on up, Bob. Okay. Mike Brigham, the, the uh, applicant. Uh, Mike is in the process of. I'm, I'm so sorry. Can you uh, start the last name? Absolutely. My last name is Stowell. Stowell, S T O W E L L. S T O W E L L. Uh, e -L -L. And, and I'm sorry, your first name? Bob. Bob. Okay. Did you get Mike's name? No. Mike Brigham, like the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Spell the same? Yeah. Okay. All right. So Mike is in the process of purchasing the uh, Dr. Bennett property out on, out on Silver Street. I closed tomorrow at 11.30. Um, I did take possession of it uh, two months ago, so I've been working on it, helping him clean out his debris. We're working on the barn now. It's um, 
one of the most beautiful properties that I've had the, the pleasure of owning. And um, tomorrow it will be official. Yes, my, my kids do. So congratulations. Thank you. It's a, it's, it's a, we've got a daughter enrolled in school. i got a five-year-old. Um, be trying out your kindergarten. And I think Rollins, too, honestly, is an un, undiscovered gem, kind of. You know, it's, a, it's like Southampton. It's kind of sneaky. People don't know it's here, and that's good. <laughs> and I'm going to respect it. You'll see. Yeah, so, so Mike is... Uh, He's going to live with the property, but Mike is also a builder and would, would like to, to partially develop some of the property. So he's, he's hired us to take a look at what, what the possibilities are there. And we, we've had some, some questions as we've gone through the process and, of, of giving them some advice and trying to be good to kind of talk, talk with uh, a few people and let you know what, what, what his, his plans are. And I know it's a preliminary consultation, but I, I, we do have some, some plans that we've put together. And this is uh, going to be a around for, for you guys. It's, it's almost 11 acres of land. It, it's uh, printing on the, the same same Paul River. And it's, is at the dead end portion of Silver Street. This is uh, the large Victorian that they have. That's quite, quite an amazing house. This, this is a, a carriage house that, that Dr. Tennant was in the process of, of restoring. And what you can't see here very good is, is an outline of, of the, Got a better picture. You know, the, the car barn that, that is, is uh, planned to be re reworked here as part of the, this, this project. I think that's the the one thing that, that we wanted to, to go over and pick up speed on what, what Mike would like to do there. This, this is uh, a monster uh, barn that Dr. Bennett has, has uh, stored cars, stored cars, stored cars, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it's kind, of a, it's kind of limited in its uh, re reuse. So uh, under, under this scenario, Mike is looking at taking that, taking that down. And, in the process of, of uh, taking it down, he's come across the fact that, that Dr. Bennett was uh, uh, he approached things differently. I mean, the way he built that wasn't just to build a structure for a carbine. It's, that's made up of, of uh, four old uh, timber frame barns. I was so nervous. I brought Dandy Demolition in here. We talked about going to one of the fireman breakfasts to see how we were going to get this out of the way. And I ran up to a company in Berwick, Maine, that preserves a uh, barn preservation company. And I brought them down there, and he said, whoa, just like in the house, just like some of the cars, the things that Dr. Bennett bought were kind of extravagant. So these, all the parts of this barn have little labels with numbers etched on them. They were bought at different places in New Hampshire, and then reassembled together. And then he covered it with a nasty siding and a metal roof, so you don't know what's in there. So I'm thinking, how can I take this historic home and this historic ca carriage home and match it with other homes? And now the idea is just to disassemble the four barns that are there and create. We're basically taking what's there and spreading it out. That's the four structures I see the picture there. You see why they're odd shaped? These are the actual barns. If you look through the, 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 the company that did this for us, they have gone in and surveyed. You can see them. You can see them in that picture where these high them. So these will be authentic 1850 timber frame homes insulated from the outside. All we're, basically along this whole side, we're just spreading the barn out. By doing it this way and leaving conservation land in the front and conservation land in the back, we've taken the character of this land and almost kept it this way forever. It, the front won't change at all. Basically, everything is lined up along the side where the barn is now, so that the view of this beautiful property should stay like it is under this scenario. And uh, the direction these four separate buildings are going now? Right now, it's one big building. Yeah, well, we're seeing you split them up, but yeah. we're, we're, we're facing just thinking the future plans of having four little barns spread out like that. I love what it does. They're going to be houses, is the idea. Okay. Basically, that's where I was going. Timber so frame. We're talking residential dwelling yeah. units. Changing it to the to what the neighborhood is zoned for, which is single family residential homes with views to the water, drive, <clears> uh, and basically um, character of, a, of an authentic 18th place. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this I've done a lot of developments. They're all kind of something special about them, but who knew? 
Yeah, I mean, this oh, no. this is what this is the best. This is reusing the historic property that's already that this redeveloping the site basically. What is the structure at the far end of the development? Is that existing? This is existing. This is existing. No, at the far this, that. This, yeah. would, this would be another proposed residence. It would be a one to be simulated to look like the others, but it wouldn't be authentic. Yeah. Uh, far end. Of have you marked out the 100 foot setback from the river on that plan? We, we haven't. Um, th this is, this is the, the 250 that goes along like this is the 250 setback from the Sandy Falls. So, so to back up a, a second, th th this is Mike's um, vision on how, how, to, how to do this. My final project that I'm here for many people for is as far as we're proposing this is in the in the urban residential. It's uh, it's about 11 acres of land. We're we're proposing open open space subdivision, and we've gone through the the uh, applicable computations to determine what what the appropriate density there is under the zoning ordinance as far as taking out the steep slopes and wetlands, etc. And we, we've come up with the, the by zoning it's, it's uh, the density should be seven seven dwelling units there. So what we've tried to do in coming up with seven dwelling units is we've got two of them. Are the, the one is the main house, one is the carriage house that's under renovations. And then Mike's talking about what to do with the rest here. As, as far as the development of the site, what, what we worked on here is it's providing open space all the way along the entire front of, of the river here, as well as this here, which is, is prime development over the here. What Mike's idea was there was to, li to leave this completely natural. It's, it's a big open lawn area now. So that as you're at Silver Street and you, and you turn in here from Silver Street and you look, this is, this is what you see. You, you see the existing home as you, as you do now. So that, that is, is the intent here is to is work within the, the, the open space rules so that we can, we can fit some new development in. Uh, over here that, that's currently been developed but in a different uh, we want to convert it to, to the permitted use and but again to try and maintain the character of the, the way the property is today. So this is all proposed as open space. That's a little over an acre of land that would that be maintained it's currently currently got some landscaping and, and it's lawn it's lawn area and uh, it, it provides that dramatic view as you as you pull in and see the main house. So that that's that's the overall. So we've got out of our seven allowed units, we've got the main house, the carriage house, him splitting up the existing barn into four, and then this this is this is one that would be. Uh, I'm calling it a future lot. I'm I'm going to live in this house. It's a lot more house than I planned on, but I'm falling in love as I'm restoring it. But someday it's going to be too much, and I don't want to be out there shopping again, so the, the goal would be to, to not, this will not get built in the immediate future. This is something that I want to sit on and, and have for later in life. It's my dream location here. I, I don't want to get myself mixed up in the, in the wrong house. You know, someday it's just a massive house. <laughs> shows an area that was, was reworked pretty dramatically here to get uh, under here is a drive under under, under the car bar. It's, it's about a 16 foot high lower level that uh, he used to, to work on the vehicles. So this has all been, been uh, regraded and, and disturbed and, and kind of left in, in dis disrepair. This is, this is the open area that, that currently has one of the driveways, part of the loop driveway so that would be removed here. Turned into a the lawn area there. Um, and again, this Mike's currently working on this, and this would be a, a future project. We've got an old, older barn out here that's beyond repair that, that would be removed at the same time the the uh, uh, <coughs> car lines. The goal is when you buy into this, you get um, a, a piece of the common, and then you get the right to have a picnic or a birthday party. I met one of the abutters who said that oh, someone was looking at this for wedding venues, and it's that nice. And so the whole goal is 
don't wreck it. Push off to the sides and then share it. And, and by doing this, we would deed it to be forever undeveloped in case rules ever do change. Right, this, this would be the open space that would, that would be deed restricted in, in ownership by the homeowners association that would be permanently deed restricted from any, any future development. The density is the density, can't be further subdivided, can't be uh, uh, additional development. John, any comments, initial comments? No. <laughs> no I, 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 I talked to Bob about it, um, but I didn't know what they were. I, I will tell you, I've had a bunch of phone calls about this uh, property for the last, I don't know how long it's been in the market, four or five years or whatever. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I, another developer was talking about you know, cutting this into apartments, doing a 55 plus project here. So a lot of people have looked at it, but I, I will say this is the probably the, the the coolest, I mean, the, the, probably the most sensitive thing I've heard anybody talk about doing. So, you know, I think that's a pretty cool thing. I've, I've and I wasn't aware of the years, barn. I've never seen it. Oh, I've driven by a hundred times. You've got to come anytime, you guys, if there's a site yeah. walk or whatever. I, my company is Lorax Sustainable Development. I grew up in Portsmouth. The developments I do are conservation subdivisions. I do no fossil fuels. I, I don't think there's any need for them. These houses will be, except possibly the existing house, net zero. They'll be, the, the way they're facing, they all have plenty of exposure to the south. They're going to have heat pumps or geothermal heat. They're going to be insulated tight. A little extra thought in the beginning makes a, a high performance home for many years to come. This could be front page news in, 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 a, in well, Foster's is already talking about it, but the fact that we're going to create the first net zero neighborhood, mm. and I'm going to struggle hard with enough solar panels, you can almost net zero anything, but we're insulating the heck out of this house. We're, we're really looking into the best way to try to get those two oil things out of the basement. Um, but this will be a net zero neighborhood. These houses will all make all the power that they need to heat and cool themselves. And they're, they're going to be basically reusing or repurposing a, a barn that was hand selected from some of the best frames that are out there by a well-known um, uh, they're called preservation timber framing. And these guys from yeah, the beginning, broke. what's that? Yeah. Yeah. They, you should have seen them. They, they sent three <clears> guys <throat> down here and they started measuring and sketching. And they're talking about this is one of those who haggle joints. And look, they haven't, you know, and, and they were respecting. And they, they actually, these are the actual barns that they've drawn out with all of the. So we now know what these houses are going to be. Wow. And Dr. Bennett confirmed it that he. He bought four barns and then put three side by side and disassembled one. And all we're merely going to do, you can't knock it down once you've been in it. It's, from the outside, it's nasty, but this is, is historic and couldn't match the, the theme any better than anything I could have created. If I can ask a question. I, um, in the, your term of Laura, it's from Dr. Seuss, is that right? Um, um, are you... Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, I, are you going to try to preserve as many of the trees there that are currently there, or are you going to be knocking some down? There's some are going to go, but absolutely, trees are a big, important part of this development. If there's some areas where I can weed out some stuff to help others, and, and views are important, but we have it. We sit up high and look down onto the water. Every one of these will have water views, by the way. Okay. It's going to be a, 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 real, a real neat little enclave of home. Will the plan be for underground utilities? Absolutely. Good. The only thing I'm not sure, you know, if you look at the, the plan, we've been through this battle before. Is, is this going to be a town road or are you going to do it? Is it going to be a private town? Start the plane. We've, we've tried. We've tried to do uh, call sex at this, and uh, the fire department wants nothing to do with them. So no hammerhead kind of. I don't know like what that. to tell you. Um, okay. I mean, we. I think this board would. Would be very supportive of a hammerhead or, or a, a T or a P, but the thought is the term. So if you basically, Bob can tell you that he was afraid that that could come up, and he did draw our second concept. It's more road. It's more uh, pervious coverage. And, and we and we all get all that. Worst way we cannot can sell the fire department on a. They can turn around now. Yeah. Well, I think that's where maybe we have a technical review meeting or. Or what if there is a? If, I mean, I've got two roundabouts, kind of. I, I think what I would. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to get frustrated with you. I'm. I'm just saying that our frustration is. I, I think this board is willing to. Uh, at least we have. We're showing the difference. That, that, you know, willing to. I, 
know, I try to explain to the town, the, both the public works department, for the, high, the road agent and the fire department, that these things are easier to plow, um, they're more maneuverable. Well, was, they never seem to want to hear it, but I think we can have that discussion. Yeah, I mean, we, we, just in case you said that. <laughs> I mean, we, we want to vote. <laughs> yeah, typically, in, what we try to do in, in the, the, the cluster subdivision concept is, is to look at where, where we want to site the structures. And we, we found the, the building sites that, that we thought were the most appropriate building sites. Keeping in mind that Mike wanted to keep this area up front here clean so that he could maintain the presence of, of the house there. And then once we got there, we figured out the best way to get the infrastructure there rather than having the road drive the development. So we, we on these types of projects, that, that we, we feel that the, the hammerhead is more efficient, it's less pavement, et cetera, et cetera. But we understand it doesn't fit with everybody's rules. That's, that was one of the things we wanted to review this evening is how that would be this evening. Are we, are we swimming upstream or... Uh, maybe we have it, maybe it's worth it. You know, that it's not just fire department, the highway department's got a problem too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what, what is Schindler? Uh, the Schindler call the same? He, he, he did the hammerhead. That's a hammerhead. Oh, that's and, a hammerhead? And, and everybody keeps and saying, how did that happen and how did it get approved? And they're <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I like it. I mean, yeah, sometimes love. It but makes it really hard to stack snow. Like, like up there, you know, the, it's hard to put snow not in somebody's driveway. It is a snow. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, it's 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 a discussion that we we have to have, or that you know we and maybe Caroline could, as a new town administrator, we have a, a, a technical review committee meeting with the public works and the and the fire safety people to see. We should have both. You can kind of right. see it. You know, right. it's, it's more. It's definitely more everything. Yeah. 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 And we've also fought for narrow roads, and that seems to. Never go anywhere either. So, um, but yeah, those are discussions we can have. I mean, it's such a short road; it's not going to really matter. No, it, it's not. It's not a, an expense thing. It's a. It's a conservation. No, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's, but this is. Uh, we've been through the road standards. This this complies with with the road standards. We would be in that category of between 50 and 200 vehicles a day. So, 22 feet of pavement. Uh, or 20 feet of pavement. Two foot shoulders. Uh, I assume that we wouldn't do sidewalks out, out here. I don't know if that's... Uh, well, there's nothing in Silver Street, is there? I don't think there's anything there. Yeah, there I don't think so. that we are creating a walking trail, I don't know if it's shown, so that everyone has access to come down to this beautiful yeah. part of it down here. So, somewhere, one of these one of these parking lines, I think this is probably the likely guy that comes out here. That there's, a, there's an old gazebo that was built out here that we, that, mm -hmm. that we would like to maintain and, and have that as part of that's why it became a wedding. Um, yeah, it'd be perfect. So there's a 250 foot um, structure set back from the river, but I yeah. think there's a 100 foot. John, maybe you remember. There's some other like no cutting zone. Yeah, 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 yeah but they're not. There's no, they're not. They're not promoting. He showed the most restricted, which is the yeah. 250. <clears throat> and part of your other talk was that some of the barn is already in it, and we were keeping it equal. Yeah, what, what we what we would like to do is is from here if, if we're if we're heading in the right direction with this is proceed to the zoning board to see if, if if we can put these structures here where we would like to within that 250 and again from the engineering engineering what I did was I looked at how much how much structure we currently had within the 250 and balanced it out and said seems like a trade um, whether that's an argument with the zoning board I don't know but that's that's what we presented. Again, we looked at particularly cleaning up the problem. If you look at uh, um, again, on, on an aerial photo, this is the 250 line here. This is a massive hole that was dug to create the drive under for this barn. What we'd like to do is, is keep it right on that. that I'm not sure he ever went to zoning for approval for that barn. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what feet deep, but the excavation that happened here inside the site. I don't know what it was wrong. I mean, I mean, did, did, did it predate zone? I don't, no. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know how it, it just keeps getting bigger, or did it happen all at once? No, it happened at once. I don't know. But it, well, it might have morphed some, but I don't so, think that it's went It's not like it happened yesterday, so I, I mean, there's a, 
It's clearly grandfathered. For some, you know, if anything, they're making well, the site better because you see that's that's what an 18-foot hole dug right down into the, you the setback. It's not the, an argument that they're going to have to make to you. But they're, but as they're, they're, they're making the quarry with the site yeah. it's a good as idea. far as the setback is concerned. I, yeah, yeah, but I think it does have to go to zoning. If it's a redevelopment yeah. and it's working out equal, does it still need to get a variance, or is it? It just never really went to zoning to begin with, or I think it would have to be proven that it was. So, like, I, I think the idea that it's a wash doesn't preclude it from the process. Because it never took the process before. Particularly think, for that reason, but I think anyway. It's a good argument. Yeah, no. yeah it, it's, it's, we're clear. trying to fix it. Clear, clearly, the, the, the part of this construction, this area, is all disturbed. It needs to be, it needs to be dealt with and to be able to do it. At these locations, would be advantageous for the overall development effort. Uh, but then we know that that's a step we need to go with the zoning board. But we thought this was a nice formal procedure. We could, yeah. could see if we were getting traction with you guys first before we started going down that road. Got here, it wasn't well received. I have a couple questions mm -hmm. in there. I just wanted to verify, but um, got the impression that this is part of the 11 acres. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Exactly. That the 11 acres is down to the river and up and down the Silver Street. There's a couple of old parcels here that came out of the parcels a long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's just shy of 11 acres. What What is that line delineating um, down at the bottom there, this perpendicular here? to the river? Perpendicular to the this? river. This? This is by the R and the like the first oh, R. Oh, this this yeah. is the pension line for 250. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. It's probably showing up. Uh, yeah, it sure. shows right here. It shows right around here. It's okay. 250. I didn't know you can see that 250 oh, yeah. <coughs> we, did, we did find a little pocket of wetlands down here where it's a lot, a lot flatter at the uh, at the river, and then there's a little bit that shadows the river back here that we've we've had kind of mapped and we identified. And still learning the region. Um, where does um, isn't there Short Street and then Silver Street? Just come on time. Here's oh. the bend in the road. Mm -hmm. And that's the dead end of the Silver Street. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Short Street is right yeah. here. Oh, right here. That's, that's typically yes. not traveled. There's Sligo, Silver, and Short. 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 Yeah. Okay, Cumbies yeah, I'm just right trying here. to visualize yeah. that. <laughs> I think Cumbies came out of this lot at one point. It, it, it could have been. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I want this all the time, but I'm ashamed to say on, on the corner there, um, where you go to the Bennett property for vehicles heading towards Silver Street. Mm -hmm. Is there a stop sign there, there now or not? No. No. You go right around the corner. Well, the, the right of way, the um, right of way goes on to Short Street. Is, sure, but what I mean, if you're going this is way, there one there the other direction, direction. Yeah. is there a stop sign right there now? There, there should be. I don't know if there is now. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just yeah. thinking with your 50 to 200 vehicles trips a day, they'll call these in the town of that. Uh, if you look at the aerial photo, uh, John, it doesn't appear that there is one. I don't think there is one either. That's what my thought was. I guess well, I pull out my thumb. The only people that look at the photo. I do stop. What's that? I'll find out. Um, and just, you know, again, imagining uh, as the houses get get built that these <clears> two <throat> seem closer together than the, than the rest. And um, uh, are there, so that would be the houses would be different sizes than, than these over here. Right, right. and, and as, as Mike has talked about, is, is the idea is, is to build these foundations on um, here we would, we would put the foundation in on five and seven so that the barn can be dismantled and, and, and erected there. And the, just the logistics of, of doing that is the likely. What's the size set back? The sides are uh, 15 and I think. Yeah. So there's still about 40 or so feet, I think, between them. That, that is one of the things that you give up in, in the cluster tech development. Mm -hmm. house in order to have the common land, you've got to get them. Smaller lots for the individuals. Yeah, I guess. It allows us to do this. Otherwise, you could have eight one-acre lots, and, then, and that's the old way. Right. We don't right. want to do that anymore. Yeah, I guess I was just, you know, yeah. thinking cluster housing, but you know, this looks um, terrific space as opposed to these. He might switch those driveways to the middle to push the houses a little bit further apart. Yeah. Okay. It's just an opinion. How yeah. I would feel. Yeah, as long as they be setbacks, I mean. Kind of All right. Any of the members of the board have any questions for these? Just a parting comment 
for whatever renovations you're doing on the existing structures. Mm -hmm. Read the zoning ordinance for building permit requirements. Yeah, right now you need one for nearly everything. Right now it's been painting and, and waterproof in the basement, you know, things like that, because I don't close mm -hmm. until tomorrow. But that's mostly what it needs. We're not like ripping out kitchens and adding, but I won't, I promise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to in the wrong place. <laughs> Um, can I clarify my, my own mind yeah. where you said you took possession, but your closing no. is tomorrow? I leased it. You leased it. Right. What they did was once they accepted my offer, um, they needed a certain period of time to empty it and to empty the barns. Fine. So they ended you leased up leasing. it. I that, that, yeah. that. <laughs> so I'm living there now. Yeah. And, and, um, and that was the only other question I had was if, if we wanted to come back to the next meeting next month, there's a deadline in which you need to receive this package before that? It's at least 20 days. 20 days? What, 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 what is so that? you're not going to meet the next planning board meeting because zoning will happen in the meantime. Zoning because of the meet. variance? So, yeah, so right. So, 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 I think there's only so much they can give us on this until we know we, we have a variance. Right. We couldn't work on it without needing the variance. I was trying to figure out, I, I, I was actually, I've been looking at that. that if, you could, if, you, if you could make the back lot, if you could make this the back lot, the problem you've got is this stupid lot. I mean, but say we just drew this house here for now. Well, then you're in trouble with this one. I mean, you know, so we'd have to read. You could make the, I, I, I've been looking at that. You I mean, obviously, you could make this the back one. lot and push the house up here and then, and then give this one more width. I mean, Bob might be able to play with a lot like If, if you come in with a plan that conforms to the zoning ordinance, and then you want to go back and get a variance to push a house back here. That's your that's your prerogative. It but, just, but, but but I I hear you. But if the thing if you come in here with a house within the 250, we're, we're sort of, our hands are tied. So if there's a way you can reconfigure it, um, I, understand. I even thought about you know pushing a house up here, but obviously you don't want to do that. So. That's the easy way to solve it. I know. We I don't know. want to. I, 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 if I, I put it there. I don't want to tell you what to do because I I I, it, I, let, I think it's awesome that you put you in the field. So. I, I don't, I don't know. What, what is the zoning board schedule? It does meet not meet regularly. It needs to call the chair. So when there's an application, they will schedule a meeting. Okay. Um, but with posting requirements, it would be at least like three or four weeks. And then the planning board only meets on the first Tuesday of every month. And as she said, 20 days prior to that meeting date. So it could take maybe three months, depending on how meeting schedules align. How quickly have they been, have they, have they been running you call? Um, a couple of weeks, I mean. They're pretty quick. It's, it's more oh, based on the notification oh, requirements. Because, okay. <coughs> I mean, I think we're, that's, a, that's a simple process to get a submission for that, that it, it's more, he does that when he can make that stuff. But, um, yeah. I'm just anxious to get, I, I know even there might be one or two of these meetings and then if, if things go well, it's the appeal period, next thing you know, it's fall, but it's, it is what it is, so um, if there was a way to apply for both, if the variance means the first. Problem, I mean, I, you know, My one concern is, and I don't know how to mitigate this, is that they'll get whatever plan approved by the ZBA, assuming that happens, and then technical review might want to tweak something, and I don't know how that... Well, I think what they're going to ask for is, is, you know, a portion of one or two homes in the 250 foot setback. It's, it's not going to affect... It really should be mostly about the... Right. right. It's not going to affect the road layout or... And we thought we'd give it a, a set distance so that we can push and pull the distance from the public. We, instead of saying 250, this one might be 200, this one might be 150. We, we thought we'd frame it like that. So we do want that to have to be flexibility. Yeah, that would be my one concern. So I guess it's, yeah, I guess it's, you know, as soon as the zoning board. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get that in so we can get that in, in process. Is there uh, anything currently scheduled? Or? Is there what? Uh, anything currently scheduled for well, this? It's only for May 14. Um, yes. It's just too quick, but the chairman, Charlie Putnam, is very you know reasonable and accommodating. So. Okay. Right. Is that, that's too quick for us? 
big bag of worms, which is to say that the EPA, um, so Rollinsford has an MS4 permit through the EPA, um, which essentially means that we are a watershed district to, to one or more impaired waterways, um, which is not just the Salmon Falls River, but um, other brooks and tributaries in town which feed into the Salmon Falls and ultimately into the Great Lake Estuary. Um, so that has put a great deal of requirements on this town. This is the first year of our permit. Um, it's a five-year permit, and each year we have um, progressively more restrictive um, requirements to meet in terms of public outreach and public engagement and in terms of regulations. And so planning regulations fall in that category. And I know that um, some revisions to the um, site review regs, I think, and so. Site and so. that was in April, I think, of 16 that they got approved. It was a, it was a while ago and I was not yet on the board. I think it might have been 17. Mm -hmm. Was it, it was in the store by the So it was before my time. Yeah. Um, so Paul Casalt, who is the chairman of the Stormwater Committee, um, has been attending um, in my stead, and I'm, I'm going to be attending more of the meetings of the Regional Stormwater Coalition, which is advising the town. Um, with regard to how we fulfill our requirements. Um, there are, so our subdivisions have to, our, our um, regulations have to meet certain um, standards to ensure that we are um, paying, um, paying attention to how much impervious surface, um, that we are um, drainage and um, retention ponds, that yep. we're requiring them when necessary, that we, not just that, but that we are enforcing, you know, that we're inspecting and enforcing those things. Over, over time, we have to um, get better at this. And so, um, I don't know how our regulations, although they did receive that relatively recent um, revision with regard to stormwater, they, it's not clear that they're completely compliant to the level at which they need to be. So I wanted to bring that to this group's attention and let you know that I'm going to be reaching out to Stratford Regional Planning to see if they can do an evaluation from the scope of... They were the ones that did it. I mean, Liz Durfee started out doing it, and then she left, and then there was another planner from Stratford that did it with a grant. That, what's her name? Uh, Susan? Sue? Susan? Susan Slack was... No, not Susan Slack. Sue, the, you're selecting them. Oh, Suzanne. Suzanne. Yes. She got it. And, and so they, they went through And I think that's what those two revisions it, came from. I mean, uh, they went through everything and, 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 and made sure everything was compliance. And then, uh, what's his name? Uh, from civil work, civil consultant. Jay Stevens. Jay. Jay reviewed everything. So I, I don't know where we're lacking. Okay. So if you think Jay reviewed it, I would, um, I would reach out to him and see what he knows. What's not clear is whether or not um, whether or not the regulations changed since they've reviewed it. But there were also right. in our two years ago, so. but in our notice of intent, which is the filing for approval of this permit, there were three things that had to be accomplished. And two of them, it looks like, were what was approved in you know, the not too distant past. There's one thing that seems that could be outstanding and I don't remember if it's what actually falls within the planning regs, or if it's the IDDE ordinance, the illicit discharge detection and elimination ordinance, which they are trying to get us to adopt. It looks like we have to adopt, but it's not clear whether or not it makes sense to adopt it um, in its entirety as a template, or to break it apart and put it in existing regulations. So, I don't know if you have any experience or feelings about that. I don't. Okay. I'd be lying if I said it. Did, if so. if it it's been a couple of years since we went through the public yeah. outreach, and I know Suzanne was involved in that, but I'm sure there's been updates and, and changes since we went through that last. So I'm sure there's been and more, had, and more had, stringent and now, we perhaps. Had a committee that met quite, I mean, because I Who was the committee? How? Oh, it was the guy from the water and sewer, Mike. Michael Point. Michael Point, me, Liz Durfee, 
maybe Suzanne, I can't remember. Because I, I, you had a grant and you needed matching funds. Yes. So I volunteered my time to get you the matching, to get you the match. And we spent, I, I want to say a year, maybe monthly. Did you it or not? Yeah, I remember, I remember you being in something like that. So you met monthly and you went through yeah, all of about them? monthly, maybe every other month during the summer, but yes. Yep. But, so you took what they were prescribing Liz, as Liz, required? Liz had a template that, you know, from the Regional Planning Commission, and she basically bring us pieces and parts we review and say, yep, that works for us. I think Pat Macklin may have. He, he was on the committee too, I think. Um, okay. Unfortunately, Liz is no longer at the right. planning commission, but I'm sure they have a record of it. I, I just don't I know what's changed in two years. I can't believe much has changed. But it was a fair amount of work. So that's a fair question, and I'm going to look into that because it's going to cost some money to have anybody yeah. review this again. Yeah. But yet we have to be able to say that we're compliant to whatever. Suzanne got the grant. It got the money I remember that. that from the region. I don't know where it came from. But Prepa, it, it was the. Yes, that's. that's the, it was yeah. a UNH yeah, yeah. grant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but yet I wasn't really involved in it. So I'll ask Stratford Regional if they have a record okay. of what was approved and how if you know, I don't know how much they'd be able to say that it does or doesn't relate to currently required yep. regulations. But we're going to have to know and be able to prove that. We're I'm sure they have some regulations. Yeah, they could do that. So um, that's pro this is probably going to be an ongoing conversation. Sure, no, it sounds while. like it needs to be. So if I understand that you're going to look and see if there's any records uh, relating to the uh, grant meetings that uh, John was part of. Yes, whether those meetings and also whether Stratford Regional has any record of um, their recommended um, revisions to our documents and whether or not we adopted they adopted everything that they recommended. I so that. so I don't you know, I guess knowing that we went through that process, could they speak to whether or not they feel as though there's a need for a further look? You know, have there been have the EPA guidelines changed such that we should revisit the whole conversation? I guess is the question. Which is a distinct possibility. And so even though we have this five year permit or window, the EPA is allowed to change their recommendations within this window? Well, this is the first year with this permit, and that happened two or so years ago. So we're, you know, we have guidelines that we have to, requirements that we have to meet, um, which change in each year of this permit. So okay. planning regs are in there, um, okay. regardless of what may have happened in the past. All right. It will be ongoing because it's a five-year permit. It isn't. Well, so the whole idea of the stormwater permit is an ongoing thing, and it will be um, a bigger and more restrictive conversation, you know, um, regulations going going forward. Um, I don't know how much planning documents is kind of a one and done thing, but even when we get our document, even once the documents are up to date and meet specifications, assuming that they don't already, we still need to work with the town to figure out how to create a process for adequate um, inspection and um, enforcement of those requirements. So we just... And that wouldn't have been done in the committee that John was a part of? Um, all I can say is that the town is not necessarily as hyper aware as it needs to be about the stormwater regulations and making sure that when there's a building permit pulled that we are consulting storm, you know, whatever stormwater regulations and being really aware of integrating stormwater into every conversation, but more and more um, we're finding out that that really needs to be the case. And likewise, with this board, it's something that we're going to really not want to waive that we're going to have to really evaluate and look into with all the proposals. So when someone builds, pulls up, asks for a building permit now, what's the mechanism for seeing if the stormwater rate is being uh, uh, complied with? Well, so, for a single family house, not, nothing. Well, it, it doesn't really pertain typically to a single family house. It's more about a development. So for example, Oldenburg Lane has its rain gardens. Yeah. So. Should that get approved with rain gardens as a town, you know, so he'll, 
you know, they'll get the permits for those the homes, and the homes will be built, and the rain gardens will be installed. But how as a town are we going to keep it on our, ra our, okay, our so radar to go maintain those rain gardens, at whatever the frequency is of that? Or is it on the homeowner, and how do we make sure that that's happening? All right. We need to just be mindful of that kind of stuff. All right, thank you. That's something that the EPA has got guidelines for now. Um, yes. And those are the ones we're following. Supposedly. Those are the ones that we are trying to make sure that we are integrating into our regulations and following, and then we are um, inspecting and enforcing. So, so we don't have that kind of all in place yet because it's still relatively new. So there's no committee or board or individual assigned to do this? Just at so this point? There's a stormwater committee which is charged with trying to understand what the current requirements are and the EPA um, expectation is with regard to that permit and how best um, with the assistance of our neighboring communities to um, approach getting compliant to a minimum standard. Um, but it's still going to be on the town to figure out these processes with you know, for example, you know, there's a retention pond at the end of Wentworth Street as part of that development. I'm not sure that it's really on the highway department's radar to make sure in three years or eight years or, or when exactly should we go and make sure that it's cleaned out and functioning properly. Okay. So. Other towns are doing this. Yes. Well. To varying degrees, you know, it's a it's a new permit. Everybody's in everybody in this area is in year one of this new permit, okay. and we are trying to approach it in a unified manner, so that you know, if we're all doing the same thing in the same way, you know, there's sort of protection and unity, because there are of course different ways to interpret um, the requirements, and it's very technical. So we have a lot of guidance from UNH and from DES and EPA, and we're trying to absorb all that and yet implement it. But um, in any case, we have to make sure that our, our regs are up to date and that we are trying to create some kind of process within the town to make sure we're implementing, um, inspecting, and enforcing regulations. So the, um, the county conservation would they be, um, you know, part of this too? Probably not. I don't, I'm just thinking with EPA um, conservation. Um, the, so stormwater kind of goes in hand in hand with with um, conservation in the sense that the, the point of um, having our eye on stormwater is so that we can ultimately um, test the storm stormwater drainage, make sure the system's working properly, um, be aware of any illegal discharge um, that could be polluting waterways. I mean, so it's all for the intent of conservation, right? I mean, the goal is really to protect the waterways, um, which will protect the estuary, which, you know, it's all part of conservation, yes. But um, the regulations are really more um, on the town side, directed toward um, mapping out our storm drain system, um, seeing how they connect the storm drains to each other, where they outfall into the river, how they outfall into the state system, okay. um, and making sure they're cleaned out, while at the same time as a town we have to notify and engage with the public with regard to how to dispose of yard waste and pet waste and don't use too much yard um, lawn fertilizer, for example, mm -hmm. because all of those things are dent, um, nutrient-dense materials that, if concentrated, inevitably flow into the river and are right. part of right. the impairments of our waterways. Okay. So that's that's the town job, is to make sure that the water that goes into the storm drain and ultimately into the river um, is as clean as possible. So we're going to have to end up um, inventory, like having a better um, sense of the condition of our storm drains and which way they flow and um, testing of them and having the IDDE ordinance is about regulating um, what goes into those storm drains. It's about fines for dumping things that you can't, um, which is a little bit um, redundant to the state statute because you already can't do that per DES rules. So, but nonetheless, like storm storm drains and water runoff 
um, engaging with the public about good management practices with our yards and taking care of our dogs um, so that we can protect. So, um, okay. it's an infrastructure yeah. thing, I guess. You know, it's an infrastructure regulation kind of thing okay. at this point. Thanks. All right. Thank you, uh, Caroline. Uh, so, I understand there are some gentlemen here like that that aren't on the agenda. Uh, that like to be heard in some regard. I am a somewhat. I did, promise you, less than three minutes. Well, and, and my concern isn't so much time as uh, as an attorney. I, and I'm very much process oriented, and uh, you know, given that there's been no sure. uh, public, um, you know, notice that you'll be appearing, I am uh, somewhat reluctant. I mean, certainly, I think we we no, tell you today is not going to be binding. John, do you have any concerns about this? No, I mean, I think Jim wants to. No, I mean, Jim called me and asked me about the situation that he finds himself in. I think what he's trying to get from you is uh, what happened, uh, uh, what exactly was approved, and what are my options. So I don't. I think it's, it would be no different than if you had a, a you know, just coming in and asking. He all he was asking you about what happened. He said, I don't think they're asking to modify anything. Yeah. All right. Uh, if, if you is that, is that fair? <laughs> yeah, thanks for having a seat and give your name, <coughs> and, name and address, and okay. knowing that uh, nothing binding is going to be done to, <laughs> done tonight. Okay, so I have a couple of questions. I'm Jim Walcott from uh, 171 Columbus Ave in Dover, New Hampshire. I purchased this a lot probably a year ago. My wife and I were going to live there. Back up. Oh, sorry. We have uh, three board three. members. Okay. So do you have the plan? Yep. <laughs> Couldn't you guys all do this plan? No, 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 three of the members. members so. Okay. This is a. This way. Rollins Road right here. What what green houses would be approximately here? Uh, okay. This is a. Jason Lavoie's land. He was. This is Lavoie's current house. Was, well, he sold it. Well, okay. But that anyway. was the house. This okay. is the lot that you guys created. All right, I know. This is Shady Lane that runs up to the hospital eventually uh, over here. In 30 years. I, someone said it was dry 150 <laughs> years ago. But at any rate, um, the, the Jason was at was in front of this board for the better part of two years, yep. I would say. Wanted to do a subdivision. Uh, we had a different chair, a different board at the time. The chairman and I advised the applicant to just go get a variance to create this log. He didn't do that. He agreed to, uh, against my, uh, I, 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 I did not recommend approval of this plan. Um, I think what he agreed to do was upgrade Shady Lane to Class 5 to town, town Road Standards, which would mean back into here. The problem we've got, the problem that what happened was there was no road design. It was just a, a sort of, I think, a section of the road that, was, that Paul Conley, who was the engineer, gave us, but there, it was never designed. And I didn't know, but apparently this plan was recorded. The guy sitting to my right bought this land, and now he's trying to figure out uh, what to do with it because he can't build on it without uh, having a town road. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? That's correct. Yes, the Class 5 road, I knew that when Trish was in the property, and it wasn't a big obstruction for me because I own the excavation equipment and this dispenser and stuff, so we can do that with less expensive so we'll for less money. Um, but what I did not know that I'd have to go to the selectmen to get the road the class five road approved and then have them lay that out and then obviously we're gonna have a public hearing at that point I would assume. I don't really think I would ever be able to get that class five road approved or the neighbors nobody wants to open up the class five road. That's the biggest issue out there. Now Carlton, I purchased the land and when we decided not to move, Carlton had talked to me six months ago and he said, if you ever want to sell that land, I want to buy it. Because he grew up here in uh, in Rollinsburg. So I called him and put it under agreement with him. So actually he's gonna be the applicant and I would be the owner, and what he's just trying to do is build his house. And he knows the neighbors, and he's talked to them, and they say, Count, you know what, if you want to build your house out there, that's fine, we'd love it, but just don't open up that road. You know, that, that's their issue. So we would even deed restrict the property. We're going to go to the zoning board next formally, you know, with actually golf stole, and um, it was just, that just left. So we'll hit them up. We have two choices, either upgrade this to a class five road, or go and see two variances, one or not, uh, being able to build if you don't have a frontage on a street, the street being defined in Rollins as a class five, a class five road, okay. and then something about the definition of a, 
uh, variant from the depth. So we're going to go to the zone, we're going to try for that. So in the grand scheme of things, if we were lucky enough to get those variances, then this board becomes the, the hurdle for the building permit. Uh, no, it doesn't. Because oh, the selectmen? Oh, the selectmen. Select well, right? I don't mean yeah. care. Like you, guys, you guys have a lot of boards. We, we have nothing. Yeah, we, we have, have nothing. nothing. So, well, we have nothing to do with it. But, is there anything that you remember that you would want here, that you would want us to change? Because we're more than willing to change your plan and come back here. We'll go to the zone but first, obviously, then come and see you. But obviously, we don't want to get into details. Was there any big objections? I guess my, I was on the board at that time. I wasn't the chairman. But we spent a tremendous amount of time on this property. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not inclined to see any changes to what we struggled with for right. years. Right. Um, with Paul Conley and Attorney Shaheen coming in a year. Uh, so I... Yeah, that's in the past. I'm different. I, well, I understand you're I, different. I don't do it like that. It's but like I, we I, all love each other or we don't. What I want you to know, Mr. Wilkett, is that there have been... Uh, there was a big public hearing. A lot of people uh, turned out. A lot of prior... Even a prior owner of that property said that they want to put a house back there and weren't allowed. And so I'm, you know, really concerned about... Uh, just because the property's changed hands, that the hard work of the town should, uh, you know, be be modified. So no, I'm, I'm just not inclined to. No, we won't modify. We're just going to go. It says you can reserve the right to obtain the two variances that's on the plan, and that's what I didn't see when I bought the property. I made the stupid assumption that a recorded plan was the the conditions were met, and that was my fault for making that assumption because you can record anything you want, right? So basically, I, I bought the land without that thing I could build on it. So we'll just leave it the way that it is and um, cross our fingers and hope for the zone board. Hopefully Mr. Spencer can charm some people and we'll be able to uh, get some variances. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say aye. aye. Uh, opposed? Thank you for the